Let's turn to the Gospel of John chapter 5. John chapter 5, beginning at verse number 1. John 5, verse 1. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Listen to the words of the Lord. It says, after this, it was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which in, is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? Sick man answered him saying, sir, have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Watch Jesus' response. He said, Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. Jesus said, rise, take up your bed, and walk, and immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked, and that day was the Sabbath. For a few moments, I want to speak about, I'm down and I can't get up. <laughs> down and I can't get up. As a child, I spent a lot of time with my grandmother. We would do several things. We would go to the local grocery store. We would watch TV. We, she loved cartoons. I thought she had one of the largest Disney movie collections. And so we would watch all type of Disney movies. We'd watch TV. One of her favorite shows, The Price is Right. <laughs> At this time, I know from some of our millennials, they don't know this, but Bob Barker was the host. And as a child, I would mimic Bob Barker. He would say, come on down. We would sit there and watch that TV show day after day after day. While we was watching TV, I remember this commercial by a lady named Miss Fletcher. Miss Fletcher had a life alert button. Miss Fletcher became the star of this commercial. Miss Fletcher would say, I've fallen and I can't get up. Miss Fletcher was letting us know that sometimes life has a way of putting stumbling blocks in front of us to make us fall. Sometimes life has a way of knocking us down. Sometimes life challenges us and we are just like Miss Fletcher. We want to cry out, I've fallen and I can't get up. The question is on this morning, how do you handle life when life knocks you down? What do you do when life throws you a curveball? How do you handle life when life uppercuts you and you are down for the count? As much as we would like to press the life alert button on life, sometimes life just doesn't work like that. Life doesn't work like that because we don't have a life alert button that we can press and things will be done in an instance, when we look at this text that I'm tasked to teach here on this morning, we see a man that's down and he can't get up. This text that I'm tasked to teach here on this morning is letting us know that sometimes there's nothing we can do to get up. Everything goes wrong and nothing ever works out right. He didn't have to read Murphy's Law. 
because he's living Murphy's Law. You do know Murphy's Law, right? Anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. Life can put you in a predicament where regardless of what you do, it doesn't work out. My grandmama said it like this. If it ain't one thing, y'all got the same grandmama. <laughs> what she was really trying to say, when I feel like the tide is turning towards my way, something else happened. And I believe if we keep on living, we keep on believing that this text is tailored to show us that you can be down, but you're never out when you got Jesus. Isn't that good news on this morning? You can be down, but you're never out when you got Jesus on your side. Regardless of what has happened to you, there is hope. Regardless of how bad it happened, regardless of how many times it happened, regardless of who did it, you can be down, but you're never out because you have Jesus on your side. Something can knock you down, just like Miss Fletcher, but when you got Jesus on your side, you can be down, and he's able to help you maneuver while you're down and help you get back up again. This story is only found in the Gospel of John. John, the beloved disciple, John the evangelist. John sets the scene because Jesus is saying that there's a feast in Jerusalem. While Jesus is on his way, he rolls over to this town called Bethesda. Bethesda has a pool and five porches. Text tells us that there are some people there, but John is very descriptive. I like John. It's one of my favorite gospels because John is very descriptive. He says that there's a multitude of people. Not only is there a multitude of people, there's a multitude of people with some issues. Not only is there a multitude of people with some issues, there's a multitude of people that are sick, that are blind, that are crippled and lame. The text tells us Jesus is walking through a multitude of people and he sees a man that's down and can't get up. This man is down, watch this, because he's isolated. This didn't just happen yesterday. He wasn't uh, just down for a few days. The text tells us that he's been down for 38 years. He's isolated because according to the law, anything with a disease has to be put in an asylum and disconnected away from the living people, those who are healed, those who have money, those who have family members around. They had to be put away because they had a disease. He's at the pool because this is his last resort. He's at the pool because he wants to be reconnected to society. He's at the pool because he's desperate. He's at the pool because the pool is all he's got. And there are some people who are at life's pool. They're at every event. They're at every social group. They're at the, the casinos. They're at Keno. They're at Lotto. They're trying to do something that they've never done before because they feel like this is all I got. If I can just strike it this last time, maybe I'll get out of this situation. If I can hook up with the right person at the right time, maybe I'll get out of this funk that I'm in. They're at the pool waiting on their next big break. This man is isolated because he's allowed light to take him to a lonely place. This man doesn't just have physical issues, he has spiritual and mental issues. He's in the midst, watch this, he's in the midst of a multitude, but he's alone. Oh, there are some people here on this morning. You're in church, but you still feel all by yourself. There are some people here on this morning. If we would like to pass the microphone around and allow people to testify that you can be in a, a group of people and still feel all by yourself. You can come into church. You can dance, sing, shout, roll around, and still go out broken and still feel like you're all by yourself. This man is just like that. He's isolated. He's alone, and he's all by himself. Listen to the text. Text says, do you want to be made well? He says, well, every time I try to get in the pool, Jesus, somebody gets in before me. This man is isolated, but he's also insulated because even when hope is standing right in front of him, even when hope is talking to him, he can't see hope because his vision is impaired. Yeah. This man's vision 
uh, is impaired. His impairment caused him to be insulated. Let me see, can I help somebody out? The definition of vision impairment is the inability to tell light from darkness or the total inability to see at all. Okay. That didn't get some of y'all. Let me see, can I bring it down your role? I wish, church, I really do. I wish I had 20-20 vision, but I don't. So I went to the doctor. They put this contraption on my face. Our Thomas just said, is it one? Is it two? I said, it's one. Is it one? Is it two? I said, it's two. Is it one? Is it two? I said, it's one. Is it one? Is it two? I said, it's one. He said, okay. Mr. Young, you have what we call astigmatism. He said, your, your, the curve in your eyeball won't allow you to see light the way it's supposed to. He said, so you've been living life not seeing all that you're supposed to see. And somebody here on this morning is just like this man in this text. You've been living life not seeing all that God wants you to see. You've been operating in darkness when God wants you to operate in the light. And you're not able to understand everything that God has for you because your vision is impaired. This man is down. He's been down for so long, he can't even see light when light is staring him in the face. He's been functioning in darkness, and he's used to bad things happening to him. He's used to being broke. He's used to being on the bottom, never desiring to get to the top. And some of us are just like this man in this text. When we have opportunities to leave, we say, well, I'm just used to being in my area code. I'm just used to being in my zip code. I know it seems like it's right, but I don't know. I can't do it because I'm used to being in a bad situation. Watch the text. The text says that the man is at Bethesda. This means, Bethesda means house of hope. The man is surrounded by five pools, which is God's number for grace. And when grace, hope, and mercy is knocking at his door, he won't even answer. He's, he ends up with what we call uh, where I'm from in the South. He has the, the fixing to syndrome. Well, some of y'all know about that. Some, some people say fitting to. He, 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 he fixing to. He, he fitting to, to, to get up. Jesus said, do you want to be made? Well, he said, well, I'm, I'm fitting to, but, but, but every time I fix to get into the, the water, something else happened. Jesus didn't ask him all that. He said, do you want to be made well. And some of us are just like this guy in this text. We have to fit into. Somebody said, uh, I'm fitting to go back to church. I'm fitting to go to Sunday school. I'm fitting to fill out the application. I'm fitting to go back to college. I'm fitting to, to go back and try to get another job. I'm fixing to. And somebody is trying to help you get up off the ground and get up and get yourself together all over again. And you keep saying, I'm fitting to. Let me ask somebody this. Mm -hmm. What happened to you when life, light and life is standing right in front of you and you won't take hold to the light? What was it? that knocked you down, that has you down for so long. This man has been down for 38 long years. Why can't you get up? Was it the divorce? Did, was it that bad? What, did, did she do something that bad to you? Did, did he do something that bad to you that you can't continue going on with life? Was it the job when you got the pink slip that you can't get up and try to find another job again? What has you down for so long that you can't even hold on to light when light is standing in front of you? You can't even grab on to life when life is continuously moving. What has you down so long? What's holding you down at that pool when light and life is standing there? Essentially, when Jesus says, take up your bed and walk, he's really saying, I want you to switch position. I, I, I want you to switch from being broken and being beat down and burdened down to being free. I want you to switch from being depressed to being delivered. I want you to switch from being on the bottom to being on the top. Switch from letting people define you. Switch from letting folks live in your mind rent free. Switch from letting you, your past hold you 
has to switch from allowing what happened yesterday to control your right now and your future. Jesus is saying, I want you to be brand new. I want to make you well. I want to make you all over again. And sometimes we are looking at Jesus and we can't even answer the call. I like Jesus. Watch this. He didn't give the man an option. That's some good news for somebody here on this morning. Somebody just missed it. He didn't give the man an option. He says, do you want to be made well? He's really saying, do you want to be made whole? This word well in the Greek means uh, being made whole, mean everything being put back together again. Some of us need to learn how to be made to be made whole, to be renewed, to be uh, revised, and being put back together again because some of us have been made well, which means that we've been healed from our sickness, but sometimes the sickness can come back in us, but when you've been made whole, nothing is able to come up against your body. Nothing is able to come up against your spirit so when somebody say something crazy to you you won't go back and cuss them back out God said I want you to be made whole watch the text the text says after he made all of these excuses Jesus says get up take up your bed and walk I like this because this is an imperative test he's not saying well sir if you don't mind can you please just get up He says it. He says, get up. Take up your bed and walk. Now, this is normally where we go hysterical in the black church. We go uh, all crazy because some of us had those moments with Jesus when we've been talking to Jesus and come and Jesus come by our way. And he says, get up, take up your stuff and continue to move on. And I know that's God's word for somebody here on this morning to get up. And keep on going. Get up. Don't let nothing stop you. Keep moving. But the shout of the text to me is when he says, take up your mat and walk. Hold up, Jesus. This man has been down for how long? 38 years. You're going to tell this man to get up. And then take up this pallet that he's been laying down on, this raggedy, dirty, rough pallet. Roll it up. And you're going to tell him to walk with it? It seems as if Jesus said, I want you to disconnect from all of that stuff. I want you to be all brand new all over again. Get up and just keep walking. But he says to him, get up, take up your mat, and walk. I said, hold up now, I got an issue with this because this really, this is not making sense to me. Why would you tell the man to get up, take up his mat, and then walk? Why would you just tell him to just get up and continue moving? He said, well, one reason I'm telling him to get up, take up his mat, and walk is because when somebody sees the man with the mat, he can tell them about a man named Jesus who healed his body and allowed him to go on and keep on moving. And somebody here on this morning knows about Jesus and the reason why God has allowed you to move with some stuff in your life because you can tell somebody else about your testimony. This had me down, but now I got it. This had me on the bottom, but now I have it. I got power over the same thing that had power over me. Get up, take up your mat, and continue to walk. He said, Ken, the other reason, and I'm going to take my seat because I know we got Sunday school. He said, the other reason I told him to take up his mat is because the mat is a reminder of where he was and what he doesn't want to go back to. Sometimes God allows us to hold on so just a little while longer so we can say, I'm never going back to that. I'm never going back to her. I'm never going back to him. I thought it was a good thing, but it ended up being a bad thing, and I'm never going back to that. I thought the project was good, but it ended up being a bad I'm never going back to that neighbor. I'm never going back to that. And sometimes God allows us to have some stuff as reminders on our cell phone when stuff pop up and say, oh, I can't do that again. I can't never do that again. Again, I can't never mess around in that neighborhood. I can never mess around with that all again. I need to get up and keep on moving. And is there anybody here on this morning knows that God is telling somebody that you can get up and keep on going? You may be down, but you're never out because Jesus is able to pick you up, shake you up, 
place your feet on the solid ground and allow you to keep on moving even when it's on the Sabbath. Somebody here this morning to come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be down and can't get up. The real issue with this text is sometimes we try to do things in our own power and in our own might. The text shows us that man, this man in this text was down. He couldn't get up. But when Jesus told him to get up, God gave him the strength to do it God's way. And I think if we learn anything from this text, with Jesus, all things are possible. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you.